Freddie, welcome into the studio this afternoon. Thank you very much. I wonder if you could tell us just a little bit about the museum, first of all. Well, the bus museum, we've actually been on the go quite a few years now. It, it really all started with groups of individuals who owned old buses, including myself. Um, and in 1985, we purchased a shed over in Whitburn, West Lothian, and it was a formation of the collection of the buses that all the individuals owned. So really, it's just grown from there, so culminating in 1995 when we moved to Lathamond. We've really got about 180 buses on the site at the moment, making us possibly, we think, the world's largest bus museum. If anybody knows of anything bigger, we'd really be interested to know. But that's how it started, way back about 1985, that was the actual formation of the bus museum. And are all the buses privately owned by individuals? Yes, the buses generally are individually owned. The, the bus museum do own a few, but it's really a minority of the collection. Uh, it's individuals that do own the vehicles themselves. And are they all roadworthy? No. Basically, you can have them from total wrecks, having been found in a field or a scrap yard or whatever, to fully restored machines. So we have the full spectrum of different conditions of vehicles. And that's that's what we're there for. We, we do have offer the facility to restore old buses. Perhaps you find an old one in a field. Is the plan to restore these sorts of vehicles into a running order? It depends if you win the lottery. You could spend as much as you like on restoring an old bus. It depends on the condition. Ideally, getting one straight off service is the best bet because you know it's a runner and it's complete. But, for instance, in my case, I, we found one that was located in a, a peat bog up in the Highlands. Um, it was brought back to the museum, but unfortunately it was in too bad a condition that, as I say, a lottery win would need, be needed to restore it. But it's now actually been donated to the bus museum, and there is a specific fighting fund uh, to restore it. And it is actually making progress. But who knows, one day it so may be. getting spare parts as well. Spares aren't too bad. Um, there are m people out there who collect spares and do sell them. So mm. it is not an overly difficult problem to get spares for old buses. Mm -hmm. So the museum actually opens for the season this Sunday, isn't it? From yes, we're actually open on Sunday. Uh, we're open from half past 12 to 5 o'clock. Mm. Uh, we're only open on Sunday afternoons during the summer season right up to the holiday weekend in October. Um, that's our main opening times, but we do have other special events throughout the year. And what sort of things would they be? Right, the normal visitor on a Sunday, what happens is they're taken round the extensive site at Lathamond in a vintage bus. So they do get the nostalgia trip mm -hmm. of running and getting a trip in an old bus. <laughs> uh, they're shown the workshop, shown how restoration work is carried out. They actually see most of the vehicles on the site and then they can finish up at the exhibition hall where we have about 20 or 30 buses mostly restored and all various artefacts dealing with the bus industry in Scotland and they're free to browse around the exhibition hall. There's also a small cafe and a small shop. That's good, so they can buy some Yeah, they can buy souvenirs and a cup of tea, yes. That's quite good. And how much is it to get... It? Right, in a normal... A normal Sunday, it's £5 for an adult, £3 for a child or concession, or £12 for a family ticket. And is there like an annual membership where someone can join if they want yes, to become more yes, involved yes. and maybe volunteer to do what Absolutely, they yes, there? there is a membership. The, the membership currently stands around 400, of which obviously not all are active members. But, mm -hmm. but really what that gives you, your membership, which is £15 for an adult, and there is family memberships available, but... That actually gives you free access to all the events that are held throughout the year and that actually makes quite a considerable saving if you're a regular visitor to the museum. So you don't actually pay to get in. But also becoming a member you can become actively involved either in restoration or driving buses around the site or helping in the shop or helping in the cafe. There's a wide range of jobs that are available yeah. uh, for members. Yeah, every Sunday during the they season can indeed, or yes. they go when it's not the season for it being open as well. Yeah. If they're active and they're doing some specific work or task, yes, they can get into the museum mm -hmm. out with the normal opening hours. Because mm -hmm. um, there are generally people there during every day, mm -hmm. um, generally working on their buses, uh, restoring them. And of course the site needs looked after as well, grass cutting, painting, you name it, there's every range of uh, tasks required.
You mentioned that there has a, have a cafe. Is it tea and coffee, biscuit yes. sandwich type thing? We, yes, we do serve uh, cold rolls, cold filled rolls, mm-hmm. uh, biscuits, sweets, tea and coffee. Um, we don't do meals or anything like that because it's just financially it's not yeah, really it's worth it at the moment. Yeah, yeah. But no, we, we have enough that you can have a small picnic or whatever. I was having a look at your website and I noticed that you had a railway there as well. There's a little steam train that you're doing up. Yes, there is a railway, but it's it's run by a separate railway group. They actually lease uh, the old engine shed at the museum and they've actually laid quite an extensive amount of track and they've managed to obtain various bits of rolling stock, diesel shunters, uh, railway wagons and so on. Uh, they also have a couple of steam engines, one of which was the engine that came out of Pittencrief Park. Um, they were given the task of cosmetically restoring. It's not back to working condition, but it's been repainted and re-welded and various bits and pieces, and it's actually now ready almost to go back to Pittencrief Park but they have the facility for that. And when we have our open events, the large events, they actually do run small trips along the line. It's only about 100 yards, but they have a guards van, and you can climb on board that, and you get a a trip in a train. So it's something different. The open weekends that you have, what sort of thing do they involve? Right, we have two, uh, yeah. yeah. We We have two major events throughout the year. One is a running day in May on the 19th, and that involves actually converting one of our large sheds into a, a bus gar- a bus station. And from there we run free bus services using vintage buses to the likes of Kelty and Salin and Dunfermline. And everything's free, it's all part of your admission charge. So it's just like getting an old bus and running about West Fife in a, in a vintage bus. And that's open all day. Uh, there is a slightly extra charge for that. It's £7 for an adult as opposed to 5 for the normal day uh, and also we have our open weekend in August which is the 17th and 18th and that involves we get lots and lots of vehicles from all over the country come to the event we tend to empty all the sheds all the vehicles get brought out um, so that people can see them um, we generally have nearly 300 vehicles on the site that particular day so for those that are really into buses there's plenty to see we have lots of stalls, and we also run a free bus service up and down to Dunfermline as well if people haven't got their, their own car, uh, so you can jump on the free bus. But the free bus runs all day anyway, so mm. people can run up and down the town. So that actually leaves it outside the Debenhams bus stop? No, we've actually changed it this year, and we're now leaving from the bus station. Oh, that's good. Um, that's both events, the running day and the open weekend, and uh, the buses are leaving from the bus station this year. They're every half hour. And that's, 30 minutes. Yeah, and that's on the special event. That's, not that's that, no, Sunday, yes, that's right. Yeah. Difficult. But there's plenty of car parking spaces. Oh, absolutely. Yes, there, yeah. it's a huge site. It's yeah. a 45 acre site. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's, there's certainly plenty of car parking space. Um, we, we can cater for disabled. We have disabled toilets. Generally, the sheds are disabled friendly. The only thing is, obviously, by the construction of an old bus, unfortunately, we can't take wheelchairs on board the old buses because yeah. they're not designed for wheelchairs unfortunately mm. but no generally the whole site is, is disabled friendly so. mm. that's excellent then so is there anything else you would like to add or do you think we've covered everything or no that's fine just hope everybody comes along on Sunday to see the bus museum yeah. the, so, does everybody know where it is <laughs> well you can tell us where it is if you yes want to it's actually on the B915 which is the road more or less from Town Hill to Kelty um, it's the old Ministry of Defence stores establishment. Uh, it's on the left-hand side, halfway between Town Hill and Kelty. So if you're actually travelling from the motorway, it's roughly two miles west of Junction 4. It's, called, it's yeah. Lathamond, it's yeah. called, yes. Mm-hmm. And it's signposted, I think, isn't it? It is it's signposted. signposted. It's signposted so from the motorway. Yeah. Um, so it, if you generally come from the motorway end, you can pick up the signs, the brown mm-hmm. tourist signs. Mm-hmm. Okay. And remember, that's the museum that opens this Sunday and every Sunday through until the end of September, and it's open from half past twelve until five o'clock. And groups and school visits that can also be arranged, which would mean that if you couldn't go along on a Sunday and you're a part of a group or part of a school, and if you contact the bus museum, then I'm sure they will be happy to fit you in for.
for that. If you want to go to the website, it's www.busweb.co.uk forward slash SVBM. And the contact number is 01383 So thanks very much again, Eddie, for coming in today. And I'm sure it was, people will find it interesting. Okay, thank you very much.